Right on. All right. Good morning, everybody. Michael Hellickson here with Club Wealth Coaching and Consulting, and I am super stoked to be bringing you another edition of Club Wealth TV. And today I've got with me as my co-host, Coach Kelly Ravor, the hostess with the mostess. So, dude, (laughs) stoked to have Kelly with us. Yeah, and uh, it's funny because Kelly and I, just before we got started, we were talking about how excited we are about getting back to Hawaii for another mastermind in paradise. And uh, dude, We are I, counting down the months next February. I cannot wait. Oh, man. I'm just like, can't it be today? I know. Like, <laughs> totally ready to go back. So It was awesome, though. That, what, a, what a great event. I seriously like... That, and don't get me wrong, I love our big events as well, but it, there's just something about, you know, getting just a, hand, a very small handful of really high producers in a room together uh, that makes it just free, it, especially when you go to someplace tropical like freaking Maui and uh, you get to have this awesome experience. So anyway, super fun. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. That being said, uh, Kelly, tell everybody what markets you serve. Um, I serve Southwest Missouri. So if anybody is familiar with Springfield, Missouri, Branson, Missouri area. So Southwest Missouri is where I'm from. So pretty much anything you guys have in Southwest Missouri, shoot it her way. Uh, and then before I introduce our guest today, uh, I want to remind you guys of our sponsor. We have a sponsor that makes it possible for us to do all this stuff. Uh, and that is Wise Hire. And let me tell you, we freaking love Wise Hire. Use the heck out of them. And they are responsible for uh, countless hires, whether it's administrative or, in fact, we just hired an administrative assistant through Wise Hire uh, this last week. In fact, she starts uh, this coming week. And so, uh, you know, we love Wise Hire. And uh, if you haven't done so already, check out clubwealth.com forward slash Wise Hire. And if we could get Aubrey or Tara to put that link in the uh, chat here, that would be fantastic. So, that being said, I want to introduce our guest today. Uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, uh, is Josh Anderson. Josh last year did $2.6 million in gross commission income on 215 units. Uh, and 75% of that was from his sphere of influence and or some other type of referral. So we're going to dig deep into that. It's very interesting statistics. Uh, only 25% of his business uh, coming from signs, open houses, uh, Google reviews. And I got to take Google reviews was very interesting. I want to hear more about what you're doing with Google reviews because not a lot of people are doing that. Uh, and so I definitely want to find out what's happening there. And then of course, Zillow reviews. Uh, so that being said, Josh, welcome to club TV. Tell us a little bit more about you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, Josh Anderson. I'm, um, originally from Nashville, and been in the business for 13 years. So got in the business in April of 2006, which was kind of the tail end of it being good. And then it kind of went downward from there. Um, but, you know, I, I think I learned I didn't have money starting out in the business. So, I, you know, for me, it was a big piece of it was just doing the basics and um, kind of digging into making phone calls, doing lots of open houses and really just when you don't have money, you just get resourceful. So, you know, it's it's interesting because a lot of people, they always want to see the magic pill and what is it that, you know, really worked for you and what is it that you're doing so vastly different than anybody else. And what I'm hearing you say is really not a lot. Is that correct? The big, the big piece, you know, I've tried all of it and every time I've tried it, I've kind of kicked myself when I paid for a lead source that I knew wasn't really going to work. It was just trying it to figure it out. I think at the end of the day, I always came back to picking up the phone, shaking hands, kind of face to face, breaking bread with people. And really, that's just what works for me. And it's not for everybody, but I think realtors are always looking for the shiny object. We're always looking for the next easy way to, you know, you sell sell one, one house and it pays for it for the next year. And, um, you know, it takes work to, to work your database and to talk to all of your past clients and add value. But for me, that's just what has continued to work consistently. So talk to us about that. Talk to us about your sphere of influence and what you're doing to get business out of it. I mean, come on, let's face it. It's 161 transactions by referral. Not, you know, that's out of those 215 total transactions. That's a pretty big number. So what is it you're doing to get that? Yeah. So, you know, locally, a big piece of it is, um, you know, we're calling our clients four times a year. We're sending them mailers. We're adding value. We're connecting. Um, we're connecting with them on different social sites, but also connecting them to other 
clients of ours. Um, and then we're doing four to six client events a year. And so the client events we have always kind of done. Um, and it's just one of those things that it gives us the opportunity. Some of our clients, we don't get to see that often. And, and it gives us the opportunity to really, you know, pick up the phone, call them, invite them, then see them and then be able to follow up with them afterward. And there's probably 50% of, of our past clients that can't come to certain types of events, but it really doesn't matter. It's part of the touch. And um, so we've done, we've done big dinner parties at my house catered for wow. our top 50 referral sources. Um, you know, and that probably cost $10,000, but it was, I mean, people are still talking about it, but it was a big event, but you know, the people that were being invited to that all live in, 750,000 to two or $3 million houses. And so they're, they're good referral sources. We've also done happy hours that cost next to nothing. What we've found on our happy hours was people, people are not going to drive all over town to get a free beer. So, you know, it was one of those things we've kind of pulled back from that and done more, you know, ice cream socials or doing a community event that's got the Boy Scouts or some nonprofit attached to it and really kind of getting engagement. My office building that I bought a couple of years ago is right next to Vanderbilt University. And it's in two historic, or it's on either side of two historic neighborhoods. So we've really, you know, little things like putting out, um, you know, children at play signs, giving them to all the neighbors and just, just getting involved in the neighborhood, really. Okay, that's cool. So talk to me about, so these client events that you've done. First of all, we subscribe to the belief that you should do four client events per year, right? Uh, so I'm glad to hear that you're doing that. But you said you're contacting. Like we're gonna. I want to come back to the actual client events themselves, find out more about what you're doing there. But tell me about the phone call. So you're calling your clients four times a year. Is that just to invite them to the client event, or is there something else you're doing in terms of calls to your sphere of influence? Yeah, you know, it's a combination of things. But the the client events make it really easy to pick up the phone because I think what happens with realtors and whatever the NAR statistic is, like, you know, 83 percent of homeowners would use their agent again, but only like 22% actually use them. And I think what happens is you work so intimately with a buyer client for, you know, two or three or six months, and then you get to the closing table and everybody's happy and you give them a big hug and whatever. And then they go on their way and you get back to, you know, business as usual. And you don't, time passes and you don't really it, it, it gets to that awkward point of like, what do I pick up the phone and say to them? Cause I don't really have anything to actually say. And so I think the client events give us an easy opportunity to pick up the phone and invite them, even if it's a voicemail. So they're getting that they're getting an event bright or a paperless post. They're getting uh, a postcard in the mail. So, I mean, they're getting, they're getting touched multiple times on that, you know, with regard to that client event, uh, a text message, a phone call, an email, and then a postcard. So Josh, do you do any kind of um, like an automatic drip for these? Do you use any program that sends out text messages and reminder texts? Or, or do you have somebody that literally types that in every day? So we, we use a couple of different systems as far as like being able to send out a mass text that kind of comes back as an, it looks like an individual text. Mm -hmm. But you know, as far as like, I don't put any of my past clients or current clients on a drip campaign. I just don't, I, I just think it feels very canned and drippy and I just don't love it. So I don't do it. Um, I, I, I might, I think if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing to our actual clients and referral sources and our vendors and we're adding value, I don't think you need to put them on a drip campaign as much as just a buyer lead that came in off the website type of thing. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it seems impersonal so. when you do that, obviously. So I, but I'm, I'm loving what you're doing in terms of the phone calls. And, you know, I, here's the thing. Everybody's always looking for the magic pill, right? Mm -hmm. The fact of the yeah. matter is there is no magic pills. You're still making phone calls, even though it's by referral, you're still making phone calls to people that have done business with you or referred you in the past. True or false? Yeah. Yeah, true. I mean, the, 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 magic, the magic pill is this pick up the phone, add value, work hard, outwork the competition. That's all there is to it. Like I, I haven't figured out a, a different way of building my team and building our business. Um, it's just, it, it just takes work. Yeah. And you and can I'm automate sure. some things and you can have tools and systems, but it's still work. 
Like there's yeah. no. Yeah. You can over automate and what people, so many people, we hear this all the time, but people still forget it every day. This is a relationship business. You need to get belly to belly um, with your clients so that they remember you. If you treat them For like sure. a transaction, that's all they're going to treat you like is a transaction. And they're never going to build a relationship with you for referrals. That's right. I 100%. Told you. you know, it's funny because I, Kelly, to your point, automation is the big thing, right? Everybody's like, oh, we got to automate. We got to, I mean, we got to auto responders. We got to have AI, artificial intelligence. We got to have, you know, all this different technology and spend all this money on this stuff. And the reality is, are those things helpful to some degree? Sure. You know, I don't want it to completely discredit those things. And yet we really do have to get back to the basics of, look, I'm going to develop relationships with people. Now, Wendy uh, asks, and, and Wendy, this is a good point. And, and, and so Josh, you're sending out text messages, mass text messages. Is that right? Correct. What system are you using for those mass text messages? So we've used call fire and we've used slide broadcast and mm -hmm. those have worked for us. I know there's mighty text and there's a couple others out there that people use that, you know, this is kind of like a CRM. It's, the best one is whichever one you're going to use. And that's just what I started using. It's kind of like people probably think I'm crazy for using top producer still. I still use it. It still works for me. I've been using it for 12 and a half years and I've fought it so many times and I've always come back to it because I log in and it tells me exactly what I need to do. Okay. So, so you said slide broadcast, mighty text. And what was the other one? Call fire. Oh, call fire. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And yeah. so, you know, I, and I think, I think this is a topic that's, you know, the whole back to basics, working your sphere. I think it's such an important topic, but I also think it's a topic that realtors really don't want to talk about because they, they fight it so much. And it's just like, there's got to be another way. There's got to be something creative. I can do something shiny. And one of my mentors told me about three or four years ago when I was kind of getting a little bit burnt out because it was so mundane he was like, you know, success is boring. And I was like, oh my God, I needed to hear that so badly because it was, it's, I wake up every single day and do the exact same thing I've been doing since day one. And, you know, my time blocking and my ideal daily schedule 13 years ago was very different than it is today. It shifts, but I think there's five things in the business that people really, really need to get comfortable with mastering to, to be successful. And it's, and I can elaborate on all of them, but it's, it's, you know, beyond your database or beyond your sphere and your past clients, it's lead generation, pick one besides your sphere. It's time blocking. It's knowing your numbers because they don't lie. It's having a database and adding value to it and feeding it and then getting something back from it. And then the last one is knowing your scripts. And I think scripts is a really dirty word in real estate and probably all sales, but scripts at the end of the day is just knowing the language of real estate. And I look at a script as like, a skeletal outline of a conversation and knowing when to inject the right questions into that conversation. And so digging deep and figuring all that out and nobody really wants to master their scripts, but the people that do convert it to such a higher level. And it, those five things are just, in my opinion, you have to, if you want to do this at a high level, you've got to master them. Hey, Josh, okay. can you list those off again, please? Because I know a lot of people are scrambling to take notes right now. Kelly, well, while he's yeah. listing those off, will you type those into the Facebook chat? Absolutely. Dude, you rock. Thank you. Yeah, so it's lead generation. It's pick one and master it. You know, you just have to do it. I think people get so caught up in it, kind of the analysis paralysis of like, what's the perfect script? What am I going to say to these people when I do lead generate and pick up the phone? Um, and so it's pick one, one form of lead generation besides your SOI. Um, the second thing is your ideal daily schedule and time blocking. And of the five things, I think this one's the most important. Um, I see everybody, you know, somebody picks up the phone, you know, somebody calls an agent at nine o'clock in the morning and they're like, oh my God, I got to go show this property. And it just screws up their whole day. And so for me, all these other things are important, but if you don't know how to time block, you could have the best database in the world. And if you don't know how to work the database and time block time in your schedule to make those phone calls, doesn't matter how great your database is. Um, know your numbers. I mean, I didn't do this for probably the first five years I was in the business at a, at, I mean, 
I kind of vaguely knew them, but know your numbers. They don't lie. They just don't. If you know how many contacts it takes to set an appointment and how many appointments you have to set to keep an appointment and what your conversion ratio is, how many people you talk to in an hour on average. I mean, those are, those are things that make massive differences. Like we've started talking about, you know, what are we converting on our sign calls? Um, and, and then other things is we're at about 1.75 to two offers written per accepted. And most people in our market's probably at four or five. And when you think about how many hours you put into having to go back out and schedule showings, actually do the showings, mm -hmm. write the offers for the clients. If you can just take, if you can lower that number by a half of a point, I mean, it's saving you hundreds of hours a year if you're doing 30, 50, 60, 75 transactions. So it's a massive number to so know your numbers. Um, database, just, it doesn't matter. I started with Excel. Like it doesn't matter what your database or your CRM is. Just pick one and use it and feed it, add value to it. It's kind of like um, Gary V's book. It's jab, jab, punch or jab, jab, hook. Like add value, add value, then ask for business. Because if you're adding enough value, they're going to feel obligated to give you business back or connect you with somebody. Um, and then the last one is scripts. Just know the language of real estate. Ask the right questions. Dig deep. Um, you know, most agents want to wing scripts and really they're kind of cheating themselves because when you wing it, you're winging your business. So that's my rant. Sorry. No, I'm loving all of this, by the way. I think this is great. And I'm assuming Kelly, you're getting those all typed in and yep, it's in uh, there now, dude. Thank you very, very much. By the way, before, before we move on, I want to ask everybody who's watching, we got a bunch of people watching right now. I want to know what percentage of your business comes from repeat referral clients and or some kind of sphere of influence related activity. Uh, if you could just type it in as a percentage of your overall business, that would be huge. You know, 10%, 20%, 70%. Uh, just type that into your ch uh, into the chat here in Facebook because I really am curious as to how much uh, of our audience's business is coming from these sources. Uh, now, I will tell you that uh, in what, about six years ago, 61% of the average agent's business came from repeat and wow. referral clients. And that number dropped down to 44% uh, in within for the first five years. And then it dropped all the way down to 41% last year. What I'm curious about is Josh, what do you think of that trend that, you know, it seems to be a downward trend. First of all, what do you think is causing it? Second of all, uh, what do you think that means overall for the, for the industry and for individual agents? And is this something that is an anomaly? Is this something that is agent specific that can be solved? What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I would say first, I'm actually amazed that it was at 61% five years ago. I, that, because I know, I know I talk to consumers that just bought a house in the last year and they can't name who their realtor was, which is mind blowing to me. Um, I'm surprised that it's even dropped to 41%. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the realtor industry for having 41%, but I think, you know, part of that is probably technology. Part of it is, you know, again, I don't think that we're adding value to our database. And I think that if we turn this industry into a transactional industry, then Zillow wins and, and we can, we can keep from Zillow winning but we need to love on our clients. We need to do client events. We need to add value. We need to run our business like business people and not realtors. And we need to ultimately, they need to go, you know what? There's no reason in the world that I would call anybody but Josh Anderson for Nashville, Tennessee. And that's just what it is, in my opinion. The other piece, you know, just breaking down my business, you know, about 40 to 50 deals a year that we do come from realtor referrals around the country. So that's Keller Williams, you know, agents as well as Remax and mom and pop shops. And so a big chunk of that is doing podcasts and webinars and going and speaking at different conferences. Um, and really those people call me in between all that and ask me for advice. And I spend my time helping them because, you know, somebody, I didn't get here by myself. Somebody helped me. Several people, dozens of people helped me. Okay, so you're talking about, you're, for, uh, let, we're gonna come, I want to come back to that in just a second, because now you're starting to get into agent-to-agent -agent referrals. Uh, and so I want to sure. definitely 
address that because we've got one of our coaches, Amy Freeman, uh, is huge on agent agent referrals. Did 37 transactions uh, last year. In fact, maybe you want to tag her in here, Kelly. Uh, but uh, she did 30, she did uh, what 30 is that right? 37 transactions last year from agent to agent referrals alone. She did a ton. Yeah, she's killing it. Uh, she's also one of our coaches. Um, but, you know, a lot of what she does is she goes out to different events and starts to get to know people at events. And uh, then she created, in fact, I was just having this conversation with Coach DC Turner this morning, where she's created a map uh, on Google. So she's literally just created a Google map. And all these agents that she meets all around the country, she puts them on this Google map. And then when she's in the Club Wealth Facebook group or she's in uh, one of the other Facebook groups out there and sees that somebody has a referral for Dallas, Texas or Southwest Missouri, you know, then she knows to tag DC or to tag Kelly in it. Uh, and because she's now tagged them, they're now thinking about her. They're thinking, oh my gosh, what, you know, how cool is that? She just tagged me in this potential referral opportunity. I kind of owe her one now. Next time I receive a referral in her area, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tag her as well. Uh, are you doing anything like that? We are. So we're doing, um, so we've got a referral, kind of our own internal referral database of all the agents that have referred us business as well as outgoing and then just people that we've networked with over the years. And we've done it on Google Maps where it's got like a little pin. So you look at the different states and we've got it where it's very visual. Um, other things we've done, we created kind of a, we created a map of Tennessee and it just kind of shows middle Tennessee and, and areas written out of the areas that we work. So it's kind of an infographic of where all we work in middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. so, That's huge. Um, yeah. Okay. So bottom line, you are doing something similar where you're tracking these agents. Are you, are you tagging them? Are you making sure you friend them on Facebook and tag them in different posts and stuff like that? And, you know, it, it, yep. okay. And, and I say this because you guys, this sounds really simple. And for those of you that are watching, I'm curious, how many of you have a referral map or some sort of very specific or, or at least somewhat organized referral partner program where you're connecting with agents around the country. So if, if you do just say, um, you know, just, I want you to describe that in the chat in the Facebook. I'm, I want to understand what you guys are doing. Let's, let's turn this into a little bit of a mastermind, if you will. Um, just, I want to understand this because I feel like not enough agents are really taking advantage of this. And I think there's a huge opportunity here. I mean, look at Amy. I mean, she's freaking crushing it with it. Uh, Kelly, are you doing this now too? Yeah, we do have a referral map, very similar, just to Google Maps. Of course, okay. any time that I need an agent, first place I go is Club Wealth Member Locator. And if we don't have somebody close, then, yeah, we, we revert to our map. See, and that's huge. And by the way, I really appreciate you doing that. Uh, you know, now let me ask this. I'm curious. Why is it? And I know you're a coach for Club Wealth and all that. Uh, and I know you're a client with Club Wealth and you have been for a long time. And so I, I know you're very loyal to Club Wealth and I really appreciate that. But tell me why, very seriously, why do you start with the member locator map when you're looking for agents to send a referral to? So the reason that I start with member locator is because I feel like people that uh, have signed up to be within Club Wealth, whether they're coaches or not, that they've taken the choice or they've made the choice to treat their business like a business. And if I just looked at somebody that was in the same brokerage company as myself, then you never know. I mean, you could just pick a, a name out of the hat. You don't know if they've sold anything. You don't know if they treat their business like a business. You don't know if they're going to follow up with your clients. Whereas I feel like if you're a member within Club Wealth and you've uh, then you've consciously made a choice to pay for coaching, to treat your business like a business and you have the drive and the desire to do better. So that's why I start there. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll buy that. That makes total sense. <laughs> I mean, really, though, I mean, it does. It, it makes sense to me. OK, so that being said, when you don't find somebody there, then you go in and you post into the group, I'm assuming, which is yep. what a lot of folks do. Um, and so. All right. But you're also keeping that. So, guys, those of you that are watching, I really want to know very seriously. Type in. What are you doing? So I'm getting a few comments like Dave Woods is like, amen, I trust them. And I, I agree, Dave. And, you yep. know, I think another part of that, too, is that, you know, from a cultural standpoint, we're really picky about who gets to be in Club Wealth. If somebody's a jerk or a douchebag, we just, you know, oh, sorry, I'm not supposed to use that word. Sorry. Anyway, if somebody's not a good, you know, somebody's not the kind of person that my kids or that I want my kids around uh, or that I want my team learning from, I wouldn't want them in Club Wealth, right? And so we're really picky about that. 
Um, but, uh, you know, so not only from a production standpoint, but also from a personality standpoint, we're pretty, you know, pretty confident that, Hey, if I'm referring to a club wealth member, I'm, I'm probably safe. Um, now it's interesting. Uh, Katie Vanessa is saying, I layer my data, homeowner survey data, sphere of influence, past client, active, sold, expired, terminated, or community event database. Uh, and then she say, I layer this on a map after cross-referencing the numbers with the do not call list for lead generation. Okay. Very cool. Very interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that's a that sounds like a lot of work. I'd be interested to uh, learn more about that, Katie. I know, right? It does sound like a little bit <laughs> yeah, of work. I'm just reading was, through it saying, wait, what? <laughs> I know. It's like, it's like, okay, at some point we got to, you know, get some work. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, it's interesting. Dave Woodson, I love it. He's like, you, yet yeah, you let me in. Yes, Dave, <laughs> we love you, Dave. <laughs> let you in. We make exceptions once in a while, Dave. I'm just joking. We love you, brother. Okay, so that being said, let's come back to it. So let's go back to the referrals in general. So you're not worried then, Josh, about referral-based business going away? Is that what I'm hearing? I think if you're adding enough value to your to your database, are you going to lose some here and there? Sure, maybe. I mean, everybody's always going to have friends that get in the business or do something uh, along those lines. But I think for the most part, people still want the human interaction and the, and the expert that is in the community. I don't think that people want open door and Zillow. Is there a place for it in our industry? Sure, maybe. But I think people still want to actually talk to a friend of a friend. Um, or they're moving because so many people are moving from to Nashville from other areas, they might not know somebody in Nashville. So maybe they, you know, the reason we started using Google reviews. So they go online. I mean if you if you're if you're a millennial or or you're uh, somebody that uses the internet a lot, that's the next best thing to a referral is Google reviews. You know, my next, my next closest competitor has about 15 reviews on Google. We have about 220 and we're just crushing it. Like crushing. Not even, I wouldn't even, I don't even give any attention to Zillow or any of the other review sites anymore. Really? What about so Yelp, quick. Josh? Because Yelp's kind of- yeah. Zero. Now. Zero. What's that? Interesting. So yeah. you're saying, wait a minute, you're saying well, zero on Zillow or zero on Yelp? I have plenty of reviews on both Yelp, Zillow, Realtor.com, Angie's List, name them. I've got, I've got good reviews on all of them. But when I saw what we accidentally did and go, oh my God, we're not, I don't need to focus any attention. Here's the thing. At the end of the day, if Google wants to buy Zillow and all those other companies, they will. And if they ever wanted to get rid of all their review sites, they could. So where do people go when they search for anything in the world? It's not Ask Jeeves. It's not Zillow. It's not Yelp. It's not, it's Google. They Interesting. win. Interesting. Okay. So bottom line, you're getting some really good results out of Google reviews. So what, what, tell, me, tell me what that looks like. So somebody sees your Google review, then what happens? They just, just takes them right to your website and you're converting right off your website or what? Yeah, or they're texting us directly, or they're calling us directly. We've had we've had people. Um, we have a kind of our office building is just to drive up one level. I mean, we've had people driving down the road and go, "Hey," they walk in and go, uh, "We're looking to buy a house. We don't have an agent. We just Googled it." I'm like, <laughs> awesome. Dude. Those are good. Yeah, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. So when you yeah. drive people to that, when you when you drive people to it to ask for a review, are you sending them a link to your Google reviews or you know so to go put the review on there, or are you just asking them to Google you and do the review that way? So, and the reason I ask is because some sites have an issue with you know you sending them a link and then they follow the link there. Like Yelp, for example, has an issue with that. Yeah, um, there we have all of our review sites on our website. And so we send our website link and they just go there and pick which one they want to do. Um, the nice part about Google, in my opinion, is you don't have to have an account. So some people don't have Zillow or realtor.com or Yelp accounts and you have to create an account. So we wanted to make it really simple. And that's why we did. That's another reason that we do the, the Google. But we we asked for it as part of our, our client care manager as part of the contract to close, that's part of their closing checklist is continue to talk about asking for a referral and review all the way throughout the process. And we don't get them 100% of the time, but our goal is to get them at least 60% of the time. 
And okay. so our client care is asking for it. Our agents are asking for it. We're sending a link out after closing. Like we work our asses off to get reviews and referrals. But that that those reviews, when we've done a frankly kick-ass job all the way through a transaction, we feel like we've justified being able to ask for that review. Yeah, see, that was my question is when during the transactions are you asking for it? And it sounds like you're doing it a lot of times. All the way. The yeah. Well, on We're average, asking, how many times? Is, oh, good. I was just going to say, it's kind of like if we feel like we're doing a great job and they're excited, we're asking at certain points throughout the process. I mean, we're probably asking for reviews between the agent and the admin um, during the process, like all the way up until the day of closing, probably three to five times. Mm -hmm. And then after closing, we're asking for it. And then twice a year, we do a review contest. So we give like, you know, we'll do some kind of giveaway or some kind of, you know, that people can be entered into it, things like that. So tell us about that. So if they, if for every time they give you a review, you give them an entry into a drawing of some kind? Yeah. So if they do one in one, one review equals one entry, but if they do three reviews, they might get five entries. If they do five entries, they might get 15 entries. I mean, five reviews, they get 15 entries. Okay. And how, so what make they, it how really do you think out about that? Yeah, I like this idea. Uh, uh, I can send you all the whole system and process that we have. I mean, we've got it all. It's a playbook on paper. And we have everything as a playbook or a, a system or a checklist for everything in my business. If I have to do it more than once, it becomes a system and a process and a tool for it. So, um, so what does that look like? We send out to our clients for that year and or we'll have our virtual assistant go in and cross-reference who hasn't done a review or hasn't done multiple reviews. And we just blast it out to them and we send, you know, we don't call for that, but we send an email out to them and they also get a text message and then it's on our social media multiple times, things like that. I love this idea. So what kind of prizes do you give them? Uh, big Yeti coolers, iPhone, whatever the Apple watches, whatever they're called. Um, we've Amazon echoes. We've done all kinds of stuff. So we change it up. Um, we've done, uh, a past client that does really awesome art and is pretty well known. Uh, we'll buy a piece of her art and do do something like that. Just different things. Okay, that's for a while we got into Yetis all the time, and my admin team was like, "All right, we got to slow it down with the Yetis. Like, not everybody's an outdoorsy like wants to have you know a forty pound cooler full of beer." And I was like, "Okay, well, you can put other stuff in there too." So, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> So really quick, you said you had uh, you, you had all this stuff in a, like a playbook. I would love that if you would send that to us. Then what we'll do is uh, we'll have the team create uh, a uh, a download for it so that uh, people that are interested can, uh, can download your playbook. So definitely make sure that you know if you if you, are you would would you be willing to send that to us? I guess in the first question. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. And then that's awesome. I appreciate that. And then what we'll do is just make sure your contact info is is on that so that if people want to reach out to you, uh, they can they can do that when they download that. Uh, but you know, that's really interesting because I agree with you hundred percent that first and foremost, if you guys are going to do anything more than once in your business, you've got to have a system for it. You've got to have a checklist for it. Uh, you know, it's not, if it's worth doing more than once in your business, it's worth developing a system that's going to work time and time again. Uh, and that takes a little bit of work, right? That means you've got to put a system to it. Yeah. Uh, and as you go through that system, one of the things that's really important is every time you do it, you should be learning something, right? You should be learning, oh, that didn't go quite as well as we wanted that time. So we're going to change the system a little bit over here. And oh, that didn't go quite like we wanted, or this went really well, but I think we could take it to the next level by doing this. And you just change your checklist. And that way your staff is always adding value each time they do it. It's getting better and better and better and better. And before you know it, you've got world-class systems in place. So. Yeah. So one of the things that we, one of the things that we do is like anything that's a process. I mean, we have a video library for everything. And then on top of that video library, there's a one pager that goes with it. And then if it's like an email or it's any kind of like giveaway type stuff, we have like the, the, the ad or the email or whatever it is, it's in there with the actual text that they can copy and paste. I mean, we, we, we want to make it really simple Here's what it looked like last time. Here's the text for it. Copy and paste it and do it again. Or we save it as a signature or 
I mean, there's so many different ways we've done it. Um, so we kind of overlapped it a little bit, but I'd rather it that way than not be able to ever find anything. So Josh, um, Jeff Moore is wondering the review websites that you use. I know Google was um, one. Yeah, they're all out there. If you go to my joshandersonrealestate.com website, and there's, I think it's under the about page and it's, it's got like loyalty program or careers and then it's got reviews. And I think it's realtor.com, Yelp, Zillow, Google, and I'm missing one. I think there's five or six on there. And you said that was at joshandersonrealestate.com, correct? Yes. Okay. I put that in the, in the uh, comment section. Yeah. Okay. And so, and by the way, Wendy asks, uh, what did you accidentally do? You'd mentioned something that uh, you accidentally did. Oh, just, we never really, until, until 2018, we really didn't pay attention to like Google reviews. And we just kind of got a couple here and there and we weren't purposeful, you know, before 2017, probably we weren't really, we got them here and there, but we got really intentional and purposeful about getting them in 2017 and 18. So that was what we accidentally did was just, we, we did a review contest. We kind of ripped somebody off uh, as far as seeing it in a different market. We did it and we got a lot of reviews. Like we got like, 75 or 100 reviews from one contest and we were like wow and then the phone started ringing and then over the next couple of months we were like wow that was a pretty good return so we just kept doing it love it but you can't right. do it too much the, the the review contest you can't you can't in my opinion do more than twice a year right because you're already you're already asking them for reviews and referrals and they're getting client event things and they're getting newsletters like it's just too much to try to do it quarterly. We well, tried that, it quarterly for one year. Yeah. Okay, that brings up a really good question though. So what, how much is too much and how do you ensure that throughout the year you're bringing value and not just asking for stuff all the time? Because I think that's a real problem that a lot of agents face. Is they just ask, 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 ask and they forget that, hey, I actually have to bring value. Yeah. I don't know what the exact number is. I mean, they've done tons of studies on it, but I think you'll know when you're sending too much stuff out or you're sending, frankly, I mean, I'm probably on 50 to a hundred realtors around the country's newsletters and or canned emails. And they're all the same damn thing. And I'm like, guys, this adds no value. I don't care what's going on in the real estate market in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I just don't care. I, I, I mean, nothing personal. I just, it, or, or I'm getting a KW canned email that's, from 17 different realtors. And it's like, I then have to unsubscribe from all of it. Yeah. How many because, happy memorial emails did we all get over the weekend? <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or time change or, you know what? I mean, we don't need time Your change phone emails phone. anymore. We're in, two, we're in 2019. We don't need time change. Our phones automatically do it for us. It's, it, it's, it's just not relevant. So like hey, that find being, something else. I want everybody who's watching this today, I want you to set yourself a reminder for daylight savings time to send Mike Bjorkman a, uh, <laughs> a text message, Facebook oh. message or something. He loves it when he people. He loves them. He loves oh, them. He absolutely adores <laughs> that. There's nothing he likes more than a good time change email. Oh my gosh, man. You want to get him sideways, dude. He loves that one. All right. So that being said, we've got uh, about six minutes left and we've got to run to our coach's call. Uh, and so Josh, tell us in, in short, in closing here, if you could give some advice, you know, how am I, you know, I'm, a, I'm an agent that, you know, I'm doing, let's call it, you know, zero to 50 transactions a year. And I want to get to doing 215 transactions a year. What do I need to do? You need to go find the person that has a similar business and go shadow them. One of the things that I did early on in my career, I was in Charleston, South Carolina. And I told, I, I picked up the phone and called Greg Harrelson and told him that I was going to be in Myrtle beach, which was not fully true. I was in Charleston, but I said, Hey, can I come shadow you? And he allowed me to come shadow him. And like my mind was blown seeing his, his organization and how he ran everything. I mean, just amazing. Um, so I think you go find a mentor and go figure out what they're doing and, and, and 
do similar. Um, you can always one up things, but it's also just, just run your business like a business person, not a realtor. Um, and just do the basics, get, get comfortable with boring because success is boring. It really is. And that's why nobody wants to talk about getting back to the basics because it's not fun. It's not sexy. Just do it. Nobody wants to pick up the phone and lead generate to somebody that they haven't lead generated to in two or three years. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. Just own it. I mean, I call clients all the time and go, you know what? I was in your neighborhood last week showing properties, made me think about you. I haven't done a good job of staying in touch. I just wanted to reach out and see how the house was. If you guys ever need anything at all, vendors, contractors, handymen, anything I can do to add value or help you guys out, let me know. This reminds Nobody me of ever gets pissed off. Nobody ever gets pissed off at that script, ever. This reminds me of the Zig Ziglar quote. People often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. Do the boring <laughs> yeah. thing or every day. <laughs> yeah. Well, or brushing hot. your teeth or anything else. Yeah, uh -huh. that's right. Oh my gosh, I love it. That's funny. Okay, so, and, and by the way, I completely agree. You guys, we got to be touching our database on a regular basis. And by the way, when you get a referral, and, and Misty, there's Misty's chiming in. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Misty Bruton uh, is chiming in about success being boring. Misty, we have this conversation off frequently, don't we? Uh, you want to talk about a woman who's successful. Holy cow, Misty Bruton is one of them. Uh, that being said, um, you know, one of the things that's really, really important is what do we do when we receive a referral? And my recommendation to all of you is go to, I just, I pinned it in the comments here. Uh, there's a, a blog post that we did that's 10 things to do when you receive a referral. You guys, you need to have a system for this because so often we get a referral. We work so hard to get these referrals. We finally get that referral to come in. And what do we do with it? Well, most people don't have an, a system and a structure they follow. So I would love this. Those of you that are watching right now, type in your screen. If you do or you do not say, I have a system for uh, re referrals or I do not have a system for referrals. I would love to know. And specifically, I'm talking about, do you have a system that you use when you receive a referral? Um, all right. That being said, while you guys are typing that in, Coach Kelly, Tell us in the last couple of minutes here, you get the, uh, uh, if you could just give us your final thoughts and your biggest takeaways from this call. Oh my goodness. Josh had so much. I appreciate you so much coming on because I learned a lot. Um, my goal by the end of this year, and we're totally on track to do that is to do 200 uh, transactions by the end of the year. And I know uh, we do client appreciation events, but not to the extent that you do them. So um really my biggest takeaway is just being more intentional with calling and reaching out to your clients four times a year for the client appreciation events, because that is one thing that I do lack on. We have great client appreciation events, but I don't do my due diligence on reaching out to them multiple times before and after. So, um, and of course, yes, yeah, success is boring. So one thing that we've learned, it's boring, it's hard, it's totally worth it though. Okay. I love all the honesty that uh, people are showing in the in the comments here. You know, people saying, "Hey, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't have a system for that." I love, and then there's of course Bjork when he's like, "Michael Ellickson, dude, there's nothing more lame." Whatever, Bjorkman. We know you love it when people send you the time change reminders. He lives for that stuff. Anyway, that being said, I love that you guys are being honest about not having a system. And and, and the reality is, I haven't seen anybody type in except for Kelly. Uh, that they do have a system for what they do when they receive a referral. You guys, it's super simple. Go to the blog post, clubwealth.com forward slash referral checklist and download the free checklist. It's free. Uh, download the checklist and then all of a sudden you'll have a system too and just yeah. follow that system. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's not rocket science. Um, and you can literally just hand that, if, assuming you've got an assistant, hand that to your assistant and say, here, this is what you do when you get a referral next time. And guess what happens? You'll get more referrals because you'll be doing that. Uh, so that being said, uh, let's go to final thoughts. Josh Anderson, any last thought you'd like to share with us before we wrap up here? I think we, I think we covered a lot, man. I really appreciate coming on the, on the uh, show and, and talking to you guys. And if I can be a resource for anybody or if you guys need anything, have Nashville referrals, I'll be sure to get the um, playbooks for you guys as well. And, like I said, if I can be a resource, let me know. Love it. All right. Kelly, any final thoughts? I just really appreciate you coming on, Josh. You were fantastic. Right on. And Josh, okay. I, by Thank the way, you. do you know Angie Cody down there? Yeah, her name's familiar. 
Angie Cody. Cody. She's there in Nashville, Tennessee. One of our favorite people on the planet. Say hi to her next time you see her. She's one of our coaches down there. Will do. And uh, Angie's phenomenal. One of the greatest people you'll ever meet. Just a wonderful human being. And so anyway, that being said, uh, oh, and look at this. Misty Bruton says, we have one, but it could always be better. Care. Uh, she says, Kelly, I need your ideas. So we'll definitely get you guys sharing some ideas on that as well. And Josh, by the way, you should think about this. Come out to, and I'm going to put the, the link in here. Uh, you should come okay. out to the, because uh, you have to be, you have to sell at least 150 homes a year uh, to be at this mastermind. It's the mastermind. Hang on, I'm www.mastermind in paradise.com and this is we do this uh literally once a year yeah so it's a it's a very small mastermind every single person at the mastermind let's see if hopefully that works out and it pulls up the link yep got it uh, did it work okay uh so everybody in that mastermind has to do over 150 transactions a year uh they're ballers it's in hawaii we do it over a weekend so you can write off the day of travel before the day of travel after you get to write off the whole weekend we do a ton of fun Perfect. stuff together, dude it is awesome amazing uh, so. amazing yeah they so really pretty are. i Perfect. these small masterminds i learn more in these small masterminds than, sure. than any other event that club wealth puts on or any other event that anybody puts on that i've ever been to i learned so much in these small masterminds that's by yeah. far my favorite I agree. Me too. Me too. Tons of fun. All right, guys, we got to roll. So thank you again, everybody, for watching. This has been another episode of Club Health TV. Shout out again to our sponsor, Wise Hire. If you're not already using them, give them a shot. Uh, it's uh, clubwealth.com forward slash Wise Hire. That's where we get our discount. And uh, and thank you for that, Priyanka says. Yes. Uh, I love Kelly, her. Gosh, thanks. Awesome. Sharing. Michael, you make webinars fun. Uh, Priyanka, look, I got a bottle of Sweet Baby Rays. You know what it's for. And uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But uh, that being said, have an awesome day, everybody. Remember, inside each one of you, there's a world-class beast just dying to get out. You got to choose to unleash that beast. So go do something world-class today. Take care, everybody. Bye, guys. Awesome.